Oh, guys, we're recording! Ah! Oh, yeah, we're oh recording. My oh, my God, it's recording! We're making gravy. We're doing it. We're making the gravy. Oh, my God, Lucas, I'm freaking out. Good Ooh, freak out. Good freak out. Live. It's a good, yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a good freak out. It's good. We're doing good. We're doing good. Uh, this is Two Nosy Meerkats. Uh, welcome to welcome. our new podcast. Uh, with me, uh, as always, for the first time, but let's say always, is my lovely the the beautiful the sexy the jewish gabby jordan brown i stole that from your podcast no not your pod your open mic that you host um yes. we always i host an open mic and uh my very good friend aaron abelot clemens another three-name comedian who is also jewish uh we always introduce each other as the sexy the jewish blank mm -hmm. um but i'm now introducing my co-host the sexy the not jewish are Half you jewish I always thought so. I always thought maybe like the honorary hair. Jewish. It, it is the hair yeah. for sure. Uh, but the lovely Lucas Arnold, um, star yeah. extraordinaire, meerkat, native New Yorker, king, neurotic person, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. <laughs> oh, I'm just. Oh my goodness, this it's is so weird. It's really happening. We want it. We both, I think, have wanted to start podcasts for. Oh, 100%. A while. Yeah. Yeah. I know I personally would always just, I feel like once a week I'd text a friend being like, I should start a podcast. And they'd be like, about what? And I was like, I don't know. Just yeah. what do people do? Just talk. I just want to talk shit, you know? Yeah. I mean, this is what I do on the daily. This is, I just want to find like lighthearted, fun gossip stories and neuroses and unpack yeah. them and analyze them exactly it's the best like yeah. i was actually i was actually talking with um uh another comedian who hopefully we'll have on about like how uh uh caleb clark and he said that uh he said that he doesn't respect someone unless they make their bed and if their bed is even the slightest like if he's like dating someone like if their bed is even the Not slightest bit general. messy yeah, not in general, no. Um, <laughs> okay. Just in the, everyone needs to make their bed. No, but like he said, um, he was like, if I, like if you eat in bed, he said, if I see a single crumb, I'm out. Wow, no shit. I think my mom did always tell me as a kid that uh, if you make the bed, your room is 80% clean, which I don't know yeah. if that's good advice, but it certainly appears to be 80% clean, like because the bed is the centerpiece of the room. Um, totally. So on that level, I understand it. I don't know that if a person was hot enough, I would care if their bed was made, to be quite honest. I w if there were like hot enough, I would think I could probably just dust this off. Like, let, like yeah. I can overlook that a little bit. But then we're talking about like how much. Like if there are numerous stains of hot sauce and stuff, I'm like, okay, this might be an issue. So there's a game that... Uh, my good friend Matt Albino likes to pitch to me, um, mm -hmm. another comedian, and um, it's called it's called Deal Breaker, and it's like um, this person comes to you and you're dating them and they're perfect in every way, they're the mm -hmm. love of your life, they're like the one you've oh, been waiting for. Oh, this is good. But they have a glass ass, and you should. It's like shit like that. Like so, it's like perfect for you in every way, but there's this one horrible thing. Is it a deal breaker or not? Hold on. When you say a glass, do you mean literally an ass made of glass? It is made of glass. Yes. Oh, I couldn't but do the, that. Really? I don't no. Think what? I mean, well, the thing is, like, <clears throat> this may be from like a guy's perspective, but like, if you are having sex and it, your ass is like bouncing off of you, you do you would no, you want it, it to be, be as painful? Yeah. You would want a softer surface. No, that's true. That's true. But I mean, I just feel like if the rest of them worked, you could just like kind of finagle it whichever way. But I guess that's only the rest if of you... their body was functional. <laughs> I guess that's if you only wanted to do it in missionary, which like yeah. most people most people don't. Yeah, m yeah, yeah. It's nice debatable. to change it up a little. But... Yeah, for sure. I don't think it, for me. I don't think the ass thing would be a deal. I do love a good ass, but. If the right. ass was made of glass and they were just like my perfect person, like I am so hard to deal with. So I would just say yes to that. <laughs> I thought you meant like metaphor because I've heard like people having like brittle bones and stuff. Like, do you? Like, no, I thought I you mean, meant just like an ass that you have glass. to be a little careful. Okay, yeah. 
and it could it could just like shatter on the street like if they fell you know the ass could just Ooh. break and then they'd have to go to the hospital yeah it's oh, really goodness. yeah no you know you're right it, it could be really hard to deal with i think i would deal with it there's one i couldn't deal with this is another one that got pitched oh to yeah me, was perfect for you in every way except they turn into a tree once a month and you never know when it's going to be and it's only for like five minutes at a time you just don't know oh i could deal with that into, I don't think I could deal with that. Really? What if I would. Li- if it was just dinner with my family and I had to explain it. It's only five minutes, though. What if? I mean, that's too long. <laughs> and then no, long. it's five minutes, and then you're done for that month. But what if it doesn't come? Into, what if it's like? What if it's like the biggest? Um, what if you're like seeing an apartment together or something, and you really have to impress okay. the broker? I just went through this. I I moved, and then what? okay. You just turn into a tree and the broker's like, well, now you need like renter's insurance and all of this stuff because you might turn into a tree and break our whole house down. Okay, hold on. Does it, does the kind of tree and the size of the tree change every time? Because like on one hand you could be, okay. It's always like a big oak. That's how I perceived it. Okay, so it would, it would cause structural damage every time you were indoors. Potentially, yeah. Or, or okay. it wouldn't have to because it could happen when you're outside. It's a gamble you're taking, essentially. Yeah, okay, now now that that might be an issue now. Yeah. But maybe not. I don't think I could do that. It's a food for thought. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I sound so Italian? It's a food for a thought. It's a food for thought. Um, I was thinking, like, if it was, like... Um, if it was like a tree that changed species, like every time, like one time it could be a bonsai, the other time it could be like just a fucking sequoia. And like- That would be really cool. I would, like that. <laughs> imagine if like you were just like hugging them and then they just randomly transformed into a sequoia and you just got like shot up into the sky. Just like, oh, Jesus. Yeah, not only is that not a deal breaker, but now I like am hoping for it, you know? And then you're up there for five minutes. You get to just enjoy the view. Yeah, very, uh, very uh, into the woods vibes when Jack climbs the beanstalk and mm. sees giants in the sky. Yeah. It's my inner theater kid coming out. This is like the part of the podcast I can skip when I like have the <laughs> theater kid come out. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, wait. Gabby's theater shit. Skip ahead, skip. <laughs> 30 seconds. This, this reminds me of a would you rather, actually. Would you rather, I think I might have heard this on another podcast, actually, but actually, okay. Um, would you rather every time you sneeze, your feet change size, either get smaller or get larger, doesn't matter. Every time you every time you sneeze, your feet change size, or you can never tell the difference between babies and baked goods. Oh my God, are you kidding? I would rather sneeze and have my feet change size. I don't want to yeah. eat a baby. I'd get canceled. <laughs> or you would try to like protect a muffin. <laughs> that, that's <like> this. <laughs> well that's endearing that's fine i wouldn't get canceled for that i get yeah. canceled if i thought it was delicious croissant and i was eating a baby you yeah, wouldn't so like, get, you wouldn't get canceled for having changing feet that's the difference yeah no 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 what i love how you <laughs> oh i would definitely go for changing feet but i love that your concern is getting canceled instead of hurting an infant <laughs> of course i don't want to hurt an infant that is my number one concern And it's so obvious that I thought I could skip right to my number two concern, which is just getting canceled for eating a baby. Oh my God. I'd never live it down. I would never live it down my entire life. And I could never enjoy a croissant again because I wouldn't know. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know. I started thinking like, would just like, would just every single thing you would have to, like if you just wanted to enjoy a muffin or enjoy a croissant, like it would look like a baby and you just have to power through it I and just could, try to close your eyes. I could not do that. I could yeah. not do it. It would not be worth the taste for me. Yeah. That's It'd like be good if you were going keto. Oysters. Oh, well, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> if you were going keto, I've you're never like had protein. an oyster. What? Never had an oyster. I'd love oh to try God. one, but I never had one. It's delicious. It really is. People hate them. I've never dated anyone who likes oysters, so I'll order like, you know, two dozen oh. oysters and I'll just like put them on her plate to pretend that she's like eating them with me but I just <laughs> and just like every time you're like what you don't like them guess I gotta have all of them oh poor me and poor just like, me darn oh, whoa whoa is me <laughs> yes. um I had another thing to pitch you about the um, oh yeah deal breakers yes. so I told my girlfriend about this exercise and she came up with one but she like mm-hmm. misphrased it in a way that's become kind of like a thing we talk about now 
which is okay. she's like, okay, this person perfect for you in every way changes your whole life, except one time on a date, they take you to their own grave. <laughs> and what she meant, what? Which, which she clarified, what she meant was like, Nicholas Cage apparently reserved a tombstone for himself in like a Florida or uh, New Orleans, like this big grave site. And okay. he, what she was talking about is if someone was like, I've resume, reserved this like weird spot for myself when I die. But that's not how I heard it, right? I heard it as okay. like, they're, they're dead. <laughs> and they took <laughs> you to their grave where so it's, it's like, it's I'm a a reserved, to- it's a reserved plot. That's yes. what it is. Okay. But that's so, not how I heard it. That's not how okay, you yeah, hear yeah, it, yeah. right? Right? Yeah, no, I, I heard it initially. It's just like, this is where my body was laid to rest. <laughs> <laughs> Observe the, the vines collecting on the tombstone. It's been many a year since I walked and breathed. <laughs> I died in the influenza of 1980. <laughs> <laughs> I have been haunting ever since. I'm so oh pleased to be alive. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, wait, so wait. At what point during like dating that person would they bring that up? If it's a first date, run. But if it's yeah. like if you're a few dates in and you're just like, I know it's kind of a weird thing, but I've actually reserved a plot, then you'd be like, I can guess I understand it a little more, you know? Here's the thing. I think that if they reserved a plot, first date, I'd actually be like, that's kind of hot. It's kind of interesting because it's like you clearly have- <laughs> Wait, like a- hot? Yes, I love people who have a goal. Like, if you have, like, are, you know, goal-oriented and, like, here is where I want to be buried, I'm like, that's super hot. If the scenario I thought is true is the one that was, like, I'm actually dead, I would never be able to date that person. I would yeah, never no, no, be able no, no. to date a ghost. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is my goal. I just want to be buried here, like, so much. The lighting is amazing. <laughs> That's hot. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you love a goal oriented person. You love to see it. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> Do you hate women with dreams, Lucas? <laughs> I, I don't have the brain power to process that. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> We're off to a great start already. We're off to a great start. <laughs> By the way, if anyone uh, is just checking in, how far, wait, how many minutes are we in? Like between I, five and 10, I think. I mean, I honestly, Lucas, I'm so bad at technology. I genuinely cannot find the part where it tells us how many minutes it is. It's cool. Um, um, I'm going to guess five to 10 minutes in. Yeah. At some point, yeah. Okay, so if anyone is joining us, uh, on YouTube, perhaps, or just found us on a podcast app. So we are a couple of comedians, and we just like posing each other thought experiments and learning about like the deeper recesses of each other's minds. And that's what we're all about. We love learning the dirt that goes on in each other's minds and what goes on in yours as well. And that's right. Yes. Oh, wait, no, there is one thing I wanted to uh, talk about, which is the dream that I had. Oh my God, tell down. me. Yes. Yes, this I, okay. I love hearing about people's dreams. I hate when people are like, the most boring thing you can do is hear about a dream. I'm like, you don't care about me? Okay, that's what that <laughs> indicates to I don't me. Know. Okay, so, okay, so this is what happened in my dream. So in a dream, I went to see a football game. And the teams were owned by Hillary Clinton and Pete Buttigieg. (laughs) I don't know how I knew, but I was aware that they were the owners of the teams. (laughs) Okay, and then like halfway through the game, a pack of wild dogs stormed the field and forced the game to end. And then I watched uh, Clinton and Buttigieg shake hands for an official draw. Then as everyone was walking out of the stadium, uh, apparently Pete Buttigieg was right behind me as I was walking out of the stadium. And I overhear him on a phone call. And um, he's uh, and he says, hey, dad, no win today. <laughs> 
And for some reason, I thought he was talking to me, like he called me dad. And I was just like, I'm not your dad, Pete Buttigieg. And so I, I, uh, and so I looked around and I was like, what? And then he said, I'm on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> that is his energy. Pete Buttigieg has, excuse me, I'm on the phone energy. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> and that's when I woke up and I was like, I need to write that down. <laughs> so where was Ellen? <laughs> She must have been somewhere. She was orchestrating the whole the whole thing from a an, a Roman emperor's high chair somewhere in the stadium. I think that's, that's I'm what sure. was going on. Where what do the wild dogs look like? Uh, like hyenas. <laughs> I th- but for some reason, I wrote wild dogs. I did not say hyenas. I said uh, wild dogs. In the dream, you must have perceived them as wild dogs. Then yes. Oh yeah. my god. They were definitely varying in size and color, so I think that's why. But there was definitely a few that looked like hyenas. Yeah. And this was like a pre-COVID dream, like no one was masked in the dream. No, no one was masked in the dream. No. Okay. Because I stadium. I find it like fifty-fifty for me, like pre-COVID and post-COVID dreams. Like mm-hmm. sometimes I I have a pretty common one where I forget my mask. Like that's like the new like I'm naked in public kind of oh, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I have a couple that are like pre-COVID and then I've had a few like on the border dreams where like no one is masked but it's commented on like why isn't anyone wearing masks like in the dream so oh my god no I have not had a single master I do have a question though because I know this is actually a very common dream for mo- for a lot of people have you ever had a dream where you lose your teeth I know I haven't no have you I have not either but I know so many people do and a lot of psychologists think it's either a fear of aging, the idea of like losing your teeth, or it's a, um, but it could also be a fear of losing control. And that's like how Ooh. it's affecting. Yeah, yeah, I don't care about control. I'm like, let anyone else control my life. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't know if, I don't know if you're the same in that regard. I, I, what I, a lot of my nightmares are when I was in college, I had a lot of nightmares that there was a class that I had signed up for but just totally forgotten about and Mm -hmm. then halfway through the quarter I get an email from the professor like why haven't you been coming all quarter to this class (laughs) and I'll be like and then like that's that was my that was my fear that I wasn't as aware of everything that I had to do that is a dream I had a lot during college yeah I've had similar ones like with high school it's like you I I have ones a lot where I guess because I'm kind of a sleepy person like I nap Mm -hmm. a lot I have ones where I'm like supposed to be doing something, but I'm just asleep and not just like in my bed oversleeping. It's like, I'll be like working like on a set or something. Cause I PA mm-hmm. sometimes. And yeah. um, they'll be like, why aren't you carrying this box Gabby? And it's cause I'm like half asleep. <laughs> oh, it's very sad actually. <laughs> oh my God. That's so sweet. Um, Oh, wait, did you, when you were like around four or five, did you have a dream of falling, a a recurrent dream of falling? No, but I have them now. It's not recurring. It's like, I, I will have dreams where I fall downstairs and then I wake up because I'm like, oh my God, I just fell down the stairs and my body just twitch. Do you twitch in your sleep? Yes. I do that sometimes just as I'm falling asleep where I just sort of jolt or I, and like, I just like get control of my body again, like seizing up. Yeah. And the thing is, is like, I uh, complain. Mine complains. <laughs> no, not yet. Oh. We've only, we've only like actually slept uh, together through the night, like uh, just a couple of times. Okay. It's still, it's still a fairly new relationship. Oh, yeah. well, that's so sweet. Yeah. You'll get there. Oh yeah, no, we will. Well, I'll, I'll bug her d- during sleep for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll ruin her night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the hallmark of a beautiful relationship. Just ruining Are each you... other's evening. Are you a very movie sleeper? Are you someone who like tosses and turns a lot? Yes, because when I was younger, like whenever, I have one younger sister and whenever we like go on trips or something, I always shared the bed with her and she Mm -hmm. is the worst with bed stuff. Like she just, she fights for the covers. She is like move, she's like in starfish position. So just every night when we'd be on a trip or something, it'd be like an all out war for bed space. And now every single person I've slept in the same bed with is like, you know, you don't have to do this with me. Like I'll be still, but I'm just traumatized at this point. Oh my God. Yeah. I, I never, I don't have any siblings, but I do remember when I was, um, I think I was eight years old. I had a, 
I was in upstate New York um, and I had uh, cousins and my aunt visiting us. And um, we decided to camp out for a night just outside the house on the grass. And I was in a tent with my two cousins. I was right between them. And for some reason, for some reason, age eight was just a very gassy year for me. I don't oh, know no. what I don't know what the cause was, but I was farting a lot that year. I like that you remember it was age eight specifically. Like yes. Age eight was the fart year and then it was memorable. Calm down. Oh wow. You, you would remember. You would remember if you were either me or my and the thing is like in the middle of the night, my cousin he just said he was like, Lucas, please stop farting. Like, <laughs> Like he was just pleading with me out of the desperation of his heart. I was like, I'm sorry, it just keeps coming. Oh my god. Did you deny it? No, you No, couldn't. I guess you couldn't, yeah. It was too audible. <laughs> oh, I used to, when I was um, in sixth grade, I like kind of had the silent but deadly farts, but for some reason, like, I never... I, I, I didn't have a lot of body awareness as a kid, so I kind mm. of didn't sometimes know if I was farting or I wasn't, which really? sounds insane. Yeah, but I just like wasn't sure. And people in middle school just used to pick on me and they'd be like, oh, they called me Gabrielle. They'd be like, oh, my God, Gabrielle just farted. And I didn't know whether I did or didn't, but I'd be defensive and I would just be like, no, I did it, which is exactly oh. how you make people think you did, which is exactly how. Which is such gaslighting to me. It's like if you deny Literally. you fart, you farted. Like what? Like you just you just have to say like, I would admit if it was me, and that's how you get out of like people thinking it's you. Yeah, you just own it. But you have to cultivate the kind of personality where it's like, I would own it if I was me, and then if it actually was you farting people would be like, oh my God, it would never be Lucas because Lucas will always own up to it if it's him. And then you can fart right. however yeah, yeah, much yeah. you want, which is fucked up, you know? Yeah, I know. By the way, I'm not letting you, I'm not letting you get past the fact that you said gaslighting in the best way possible. <laughs> oh yes, oh my God, the double entendre. Yeah. Gaslighting. <laughs> oh. There's a fart in here. No, there isn't. You're crazy. Oh. That actually just reminded me, I saw a TikTok, uh, I think it was a few months ago. It was uh, from a, a, a deaf person who, and it's like just some like sort of staring off in the distance. And like the text reads like, that moment when you realize that farts can make a sound. <gasps> and <laughs> like, and like someone like sort of, so like, I think this person was in class one day in school and like someone tapped them on the shoulder to be like, hey, we can hear you farting. And this person was like, wait, I make noise when that happens? Because it makes sense. You wouldn't, you wouldn't know that. You wouldn't. It's actually kind of beautiful to think. I know. I mean, that's kind of, it's really it's adorable. nice that the it's really sweet. was just like, hey, yeah. listen. Like, and wasn't like laughing and not giving an explanation. That was my biggest problem with like school bullying is people would laugh and they wouldn't like tell you what was funny if you're the butt of yeah. the joke. And it's like, at least just specify. I don't yeah. know. I'm fine to be what... made fun of. I just want to. I just want to be told why. I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember when I was in middle school in seventh grade. Like, uh, I was getting made fun of because people thought that I was too emotional because they saw tears running down my eyes. I was just yawning a lot that day. I was just very tired, Aww. and they were just like, "Oh, look at look at this crying in the floor." I'm like, "No, I just didn't sleep well last night. It's not. I'm not going through tur turmoil. I'm just. I'm tired. That's it." <laughs> But I actually have the same problem with like overly teary eyes, especially oh, in the yeah. winter. It got me in trouble oh, once yeah. I like ran into this acquaintance from my elementary school, like when I was mm -hmm. all the way in college. Um, and it was like a really cold day. And I was telling her like, yeah, I don't keep in touch with a lot of people from PS41. But as I was saying that, like a tear came out of my eye. Oh. So it just looked like I was sobbing about not keeping oh, in my touch. God with people from elementary school. And she's like, all right, well, I'm gonna go. Okay. Oh, that's adorable. Yeah, my tear ducts oh my really come into play. I mean, I also do cry a lot, actually. So I can't blame okay. everything on my tear ducts, but. Yeah. Are you a crier? I, I am not that huge of a crier. There are a couple things that, wait, that will make me tear up every time. Like what? One of them, do you know the movie A Knight's Tale with Heath Ledger? Yes, oh my God. 
Okay, so the moment that he gets reunited with his dad, that makes me tear up every time. Oh, for sure, for sure. And then when uh, Uncle Iroh embraces Zuko in uh, season three of Avatar, and like I actually Zuko's haven't like, watched it yet. I okay. need to. Okay, there is a moment of embrace. I will not say anything more, but it is very emotional and it makes you like clutch your heart, just like oh yay! It's like it's so sweet. And then, so my dad's dad is the only gr uh, grandparent that I never met. He died before I was born. And my dad gave me these tapes um, because he interviewed my grandfather just about his life on a number of different tapes. And so I then bought a, a tape to MP3 converter that I could plug into my computer so I could uh, transfer these tapes to digital. And then I played back the sound and I heard my grandfather's voice for the first time in my life. And that made me tear up. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Because I've seen pictures of him, but I, I had no idea what he sounded like. And he had like a really raspy tone. It was It was sort of like, imagine like Harvey Keitel uh, from Reservoir Dogs, but just like after all of the cigarettes. Oh my God. And was he British too? No, no, no. Oh, no, okay. no, no. This is my, this is my, no, this dude, um, no, this is Tovia Aronowicz from Poland. Oh, I see. Yeah, I but he had, but it just like, yeah, he had like, um, no, but he had like a very much just like a Jewish American accent by that sure. point. Yeah, my family's a uh, Lithuanian on one side. Ah. So they all have cute accents too. I feel like this pod is a lot of like cute accents in the family podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, sure. I'm not that close though to my like to my dad's side of the family, like Jewish side of the family. And so I just I don't know them that well. Mm. Um, but they all have just very um I remember I was at a distant cousin's bar mitzvah when I was maybe twelve or so. And I just, I don't know anyone, but everyone knows. Did you experience that a lot when you were a kid? Just like everyone seems to know you, but you don't know everyone. And you're just like, Yes, I thought it was awesome. People? I was so <laughs> fucking flattered. <laughs> I, oh I, it felt like being famous, honestly. I just never like, Of course everyone of wants to know me. I'm the shit. Fuck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, and there was this very, very old woman. Like she, she looked beyond old. She looked magic old, you know? When someone just I, I know what you're looked saying. a little bit magic. And like, she just looked at me and she said, let me see your teeth. And she just really wanted to see my teeth. And I was, so I was just like, okay. And she said, they're so straight, you're beautiful. And then she like pinched my cheek and then walked away. I was like, what was that? I was just... <laughs> it's a little bit Roz from Monsters, Inc. vibes. A little bit, Mike yeah. Mike Wazowski. Mike Wazowski. Oh, there we go. <laughs> That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Lucas, should we get into Let's audience responses? Do it. Let us do it. I have it pulled up. Should I uh, read the first one? Uh, yes. And maybe we can go back and forth between. Yes, let's do that. Uh, yes. Okay, cool. Okay. Okay. So, number one. Oh, by the way, first off, thank you so much to everyone who submitted. We had 112 responses before we even put out any content of any kind. So to everyone that submitted, thank you so much. We're definitely going to hit up this list uh, more in the future. And please send us more stuff because um, yes, we're please. very, very excited. Um, if anyone doesn't know anyone uh, tuning in or uh, on YouTube or whatever, we have a Google form uh, that you can find uh, through our social media. And basically, if you have a story, um, if you have a weird phobia, a weird fear, a weird interest, or maybe like the first person you're ever attracted to as a kid, like Disney or whatever, just like anything interesting, quirky about like your upbringing, your mind, we want to hear about it. Please send it to us so we can talk about it and learn more about you. Yeah, a neurosis. Um, I just, we, we only do ask that we keep it relatively lighthearted. Obviously, yes. we're not in the business of like a revenge porn or anything gross. Yes, nothing um, disparaging or hurtful to other people, but anything you want to share about yourself and your experience, we would love to hear it. Yeah, drag yourself. Don't drag others. Well, you exactly. can drag others kind of if they deserve it, but not in such a way where yeah. Lucas and I are going to get, you know, super exactly. upset. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Let's go into our first one. Okay, okay so... Uh, my friends and I were drunk one night and played a game of who would be the last surviving person in a real life Oregon Trail situation. We unanimously voted on one friend that would definitely die first, and he's been offended ever since. Oh, <laughs> oh, poor baby. I would say 
that that's, I don't want to, you know, be, I don't want to invalidate anyone's experience. Okay. Yeah, no. I would say that I will admit I would be the first one to die in any horror movie, any Oregon Trail, either the first one to die or the last one to live. I don't know if it's an offensive thing to be. No, I think that shows that you've been like, I think, well, first off, so many people in like an or or just an apocalypse or any sort of thing where you're put to the test, so many people would not pass that test. Like so many survival people didn't. Is, That's why so yeah, many exactly. people died of dysentery and cholera and all of yeah, those exactly. terrible things. And that's not offensive. That's okay. Yeah, no, you are a person. Yeah. Um, I'm curious, but like, what, what would you say, do you have any thing that you think would be valuable in a survival situation? Anything at all? I've been watching a lot of Survivor, so it's really interesting okay. you say that. Um, a, the first thing you need to know in a survival situation is don't make your shelter on the beach, because they always do that in Survivor, and it's always so stupid, because it always gets blown away by the waves, and they just don't realize it, because they're all, like, ad executives and marketing people, and they just send them out into the wild. Not to brag, but I know I would never do that. Just, yeah, I'm no, I know you would. I, you'd yeah. be great on Survivor. I think that you'd be like a clear, like, you'd make me the top three. I think I wouldn't actually, I really don't think I'd be that bad because, like, I know a tiny bit about, like, uh, poisonous plants and their cures. I know because, like, I spent a lot of time uh, in my childhood in the countryside oh, cool. and just on, like, weekends and stuff. And I know uh, the plant to look for that's the cure for poison ivy. I think it's jewel weed, and I know how to identify it. And I also know that there's a berry that looks a lot like red currants, but it's not. It's called deadly nightshade and it's poisonous. And I know, I know how to identify that. I know what dockweed looks like. And so I know some stuff. I definitely know some stuff. Yeah. And you'd have like the social skills to get by. I mean, yeah. Survivor is very different than like real life surviving. It always makes <laughs> me laugh on Survivor. They make them do like puzzles and they make them stand on a pillar for 12 hours it's like that's not the shit that's actually going to make you survive in the wild that's just yeah no what they do on this weird show uh, i've also I, never seen survivor i don't know what it's like oh my god we're gonna get you into it uh will, Las will, Teresa's, yeah. they talk about survivor all the time it makes me, oh cool it makes me crack up um i also are you someone who's very are there any foods that you know you just can never eat because i Apart from a couple things, I'm pretty open in terms of like food. Like I am very open to eating insects. Me too. And, I, and it's weird. I always knew I was going to enjoy that. I know that sounds, because here's the thing. My mom told me that as a kid, she ate locusts and said that they tasted great, that they tasted like peanut butter. And I was like Ooh. seven and I was like, oh, in the future, I'm probably going to try insects and I'm probably going to enjoy it. Well, also a bug's life made our generation like realize that bugs all look delicious because when they bring out that platter of bugs like Timon and, and they Uba, just look colorful and everything they yeah. look so juicy and plump like it looks like you bite into it and it's like it just bursts in your mouth it looks amazing. i know yeah i wouldn't Same mind thing in the bugs. lion king in the lion king as well oh yes i think that's what that's what i meant to say what did i say you said um a bug's life oh my god no i meant the lion king Oh, oh yeah, they no, don't no, no, eat yeah, like, bugs in the lot. They, they are bugs. bugs. <laughs> they, they don't eat bugs. They are the bugs. <laughs> bugs are friends, not food. <laughs> you slept in a lion king. Um, oh my god! It's just like a cannibalistic bug society. <laughs> Can we remake it? Oh my god! It's 2075. <laughs> the bugs are. Oh no! I watched the bugs life like jet lagged off a plane, like maybe. Yeah the pre-COVID times, whatever. And mm -hmm. I just kept being like, oh my God, these bugs are so ugly. It's all I thought the entire movie is that the bugs yeah. were ugly. Maybe it's superficial oh my to me. God. It's your neurosis, I guess. Oh my God. When I was, on, I was on a plane, I just stumbled upon a movie to watch that I shouldn't have been able to find, but it was awesome. It's, it was called Lesbian Vampire Killers. Oh, please send me that. Oh, I can do better than that. I can lend you the DVD of it. <gasps> what? Wait, that person, it's just, is that a butch lesbian or is that like Quentin Tarantino? 
Um, that is not, uh, that is Matthew Horn, I think. He's on a show in the UK called Gavin and Stacey, as is uh, James Corden. I don't know if you can no! see that. Yeah, that is James Corden right there. Oh my God. And my this is a movie. <laughs> oh, this is a movie he doesn't like to talk about. He does not like that he was part of this movie. Um, by the way, this is not porn. This is not porn. This is just like, well, then, it's a right. very, oh, um, it's a, oh my God, I need to show you this movie. But yeah, it's, um, it's about these two guys that sort of go away for a lad's weekend in the countryside and they stumble across a town that is ravaged by a curse that turns every single girl on her 18th birthday into a lesbian vampire. Oh, but that sounds like fun. Oh yeah, you might like it. Yeah, I would. Not just because like I'm like a pervert who wants everyone to turn into a lesbian. Like I just I'm an empath, and I which is such a funny thing to say. I would never say that seriously. Um, I want everyone to like enjoy the camaraderie of like being 18 and having other lesbian 18 year olds around you, being like, "Girl, like you're the best. Like there's nothing wrong with you. Like you got this." And I just think that would be so nice. Just like what curse that's a blessing oh my god i have shown this movie to so many people i've toasted so many movies i'm like you guys need to see this movie and i've gotten so many people just like this is the best thing ever made you absolutely it's terrible but it's great it's so me. good oh i will i'll 100 percent show you and we need to talk about it in another episode a hundred percent uh but in conclusion i don't think your friend sir who wrote in yes. the podcast should be offended at being the last person to survive because it was really hard for people in the oregon trail the most yeah. of them, most the real oregon trail not the game but like most of them died so like that's not offensive that's fine exactly yeah okay so do you want to read the next one yes i do um Let's see. Okay, I haven't read this one yet. I think I told you I read yep. like half of them and then yeah, yeah, a, yeah. a couple others I'm reading blind. Okay, Dope. here is some petty drama I had to go through with a girl at my school. Well, you've come to the right place. Basically, what happened was we were very close spending almost all of our breaks together, hanging out after school and all around just having a good time with one another until one day she stopped talking to me. Next couple of days, she stopped talking to me. And I, asked her, I asked her why with no reply. Then one Friday, she was like, oh, I'm going to be friends with you again. That morning, she hugged me, and I was pretty suspicious. Later that night, I felt terribly sick and had to go home. In an act to salvage our already destroyed friendship, I tried to tell her that I was really sick and that I don't get sick easily, so it was just downright awful. Her response was, well, you should know I don't get sick that easily either, why doesn't a true friend know that? And obviously you aren't. We should stop being friends again. <laughs> I was just miserable in bed being sick. And here she is breathing up our friendship. I rested all weekend and came back on Monday 100% feeling better when I noticed she wasn't in school. I later learned from a mutual friend of ours that she was at home sick as a dog. All I can say is I thank karma so much for that small little victory. Oof. Whoa. Um, I... I got a little bit lost, but she just sounds very not less than stable, shall we say. I think this person writing in, I could be wrong, but this feels to me either like like a late middle school or an early high school friendship. And definitely I, I does, relate yeah. to that a lot because I had definitely a lot of like the way some of my friendships in high school and middle school ended were like so profoundly just petty and just very not meant to be when something's not meant bit, to be it won't yeah. be Go it felt on. like i remember a number of times feeling just like a little bit toyed with and it felt it was just like it was just like what's going on we're just people why are why are there's all these layers to stuff that people are and it just didn't make sense to me just like the way people interacted in like those early earlier times what is an example of that for you um i remember there was someone in school who I was interested in mm -hmm. and um, she, and we both liked uh, Florence and the Machine, I think. And um, just one day we were about to walk into class. She was just like, how was your weekend? I was like, eh, it was all right, kind of boring. And then she gave me this sign. She was like, like she was, she was like, call me. I was like, oh, okay. And so I gave her my phone and she put in her number. And then I, um, and then I uh, texted her at first. I was cool. I knew what to do. Sure. Um, yeah. And I didn't get a response. And so I waited 
a few days and I was like, hey, this is Lucas. Is this the right number? Still no response. Ne and then it was next week. I, um, uh, I confronted her. I was like, hey, did, have you gotten my text? And she was like, no, I haven't. And then she, um, and then I showed her my phone and she was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I accidentally put it in the wrong digit. Let me put, let me do the, the right one. And then she put it in. I was like, oh, okay. It was an honest mistake. And then the next day she had a boyfriend. I was like, you are okay. so kind. Like she is just giving you the runner <laughs> the whole time. Yeah. That happened to me once with um, this, this boy in high school when I used to, I, I had my, my flingances with, that's not a word. Um, my little, my little, it's a, it's a combo of instances and flings, instances, flings and dalliances. Oh my God. Had my dalliances with some boys and there was a boy named Patricio oh who was so cute. And, <gasps> um, he texted me being like, I think it's weird. We've never hooked up. Just saying. And then Ooh. I saw on his Facebook status, cause everyone used Facebook. Um, yeah. a little we are, bit we are boomers now for using Facebook. <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. And also like we're boomers for being the generation that remembers when Facebook was the way you communicated in middle school and yeah. high school. That was the way people would write on each other's Facebook wall, like cool party, huh? Yeah. You got really lit. Oh my God. Did I did? Yeah. You yeah. totally did. And it was back and forth. It was so inefficient, but yeah. Um, I, this boy, he made a status that was like, be careful what you it was something like, be careful what your words, what your thoughts are, because you never know when they'll come out in words. Okay. And it was something that was a very clear allusion to the fact that he just written a horny text and then immediately regretted it. Oh. So I think people in middle school and high school, like when that girl was like, call me, she was flirting with you. And then she just kind of regretted mm. it. But no one had the communication skills to be like, I'm sorry, I was so... Yeah. Because in middle school, we're all so ashamed of our sexual stuff. Oh, we're totally. All, we're all so terrified of, like, whether you're straight, gay, whatever. Like, everyone has different, like, degrees of, of shame around it. But everyone is so cagey about yeah. what, what now, where, it, like, if I was single and I sent that text, I'd be like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Honestly, it was kind of an off night, but I'm not terribly interested. That girl yeah. was just like, oh my God, I just ruined Lucas's life by being horny for him. And then, but like, here you are on the other end of the line. You just want a straight answer. Exactly. I think, um, I think I, I think I misspoke about like this person's response of like saying less than say, I think this is just someone who doesn't know how to, and just like the, we all do how I definitely didn't just managing our emotions and communicating them effectively. That's just something you're not good at, at that age. And it's something to it's something you're not going to maybe understand like you because the thing is like we can't we only experience things and how they relate to us and we exist at the center of our own universe and like mm. and so we think everything that happens is it's happening just to you and you think how could someone be so mean to me and they're like no they're just they're going through their own shit they don't know how to express themselves or especially be. at that age exactly yeah so but, yeah so yeah, uh, so it's okay to enjoy like that little victory of like, you know, that she got sick in the end, but like in the end, try to just like focus on you, focus on better relationships that make you feel good because there are those people. I still am friends with like a good, at least a couple of people from high school that we've just like stayed really tight with. And so just focus on the people that you know are trustworthy and make you feel good about yourself because they are going to be around for a long time. So that is so true. And who are ultimately just drama free. Cause like, exactly. The best friends are people you could just say anything to. And they're just like, yeah, of course, you know, exactly. Within reason. But. Yes. All right. Shall we move on to uh, another one? Yeah, let's do it. Oh, oh uh, okay. There we go. Um, do, do, do. Okay. Okay. One of my friends, she gets up on a date with a coworker's son. Oh, it's she gets yeah. she gets set up. Yes, she gets set up on a date with a coworker's son. Uh, my friend, let's call her Bailey, not her real name. Thank you very much. Um, all right, let's call her Bailey. Works at her nursing home. Her coworker is like her mom's age, and she was like, "Oh, let me set you up with my son." And so Bailey went over to this woman's house where they were having an Easter gathering, where said son was going to be. 
the family comes out and greets my friend Bailey, and the coworker introduces uh, her, Bailey. Uh, intro- oh, wait. No, sorry. Uh, and then the foul okay, sorry. <clears throat> the family comes out and greets my friend Bailey, and the coworker introduces her son. He shakes my friend's hand and then immediately projectile vomits everywhere. He had to go to the hospital where he then had an appendectomy. Oh, oh. his appendix birth. Oh my God. So my friend loves the time that she met a man and made him vomit as soon as she shook his hand. First off, that wasn't you who made that happen. That was just No, but the I, I worst. love the implication. <laughs> nice to meet you. I love it too. Oh my God. Oh, that's beautiful timing. That's so nice. I really love that. <laughs> I think I've definitely had it happen where, like, you just vomit in the wrong instances. Like, I, in high school, I smoked weed with the same person two times, and both times later in the day, I threw up for different reasons. So he just started a rumor that every time I smoked weed, I threw up. Oh, my God. Which is not oh. true. <laughs> FYI, in case anyone was curious. <laughs> Oh goodness. Oh, I've never, I've never, have you experienced anything like that where someone projectile vomit or like had, I don't know, like diarrhea or just like upon meeting someone or just like a big event or something? Absolutely not. That is a unique experience. That is a once in a life. I'm glad this person wrote this in because that is just. I am so glad because that is beautiful. That is an amazing story. Um, I'm also thinking. Yeah what it must be like for her co Bailey's co-worker, who's the mother of this person. Because I'm thinking, oh, this person maybe thinks like, oh, my son, he's, he's single. He doesn't really get out that much. I really want him to meet someone. I really like this co-worker of mine. I think they would make a good fit. And the moment they meet, he projectile vomits. And she's like, ah, oh, back to square one with this bastard. Oh, oh my dude. God. Yeah, you're right. It's, well, I mean, being... Jewish or half Jewish, it's just this very common occurrence for people to be like, I'm going to set you up with my son. And then, like, oh my the son is on the other, you know, end of the conversation. And he's the one who's like getting set up with all these people. It's an enormous amount of pressure. I've always felt for like 26 year old sons of neurotic Jewish mothers. Oh my um, God, yeah. Because it's just, I mean, no wonder he threw it. I mean, I'm sure he also <laughs> had appendicitis. But. Yeah. It might have been like the, I'm, tr- I'm trying to think, it might have been like the appendicitis was like the loaded gun and then the anxiety of the moment was like firing the gun. Maybe. Ooh. Because the thing is like, I remember I was at an open mic once and I nearly fainted. Um, it was, and I think a big part of it was that I was very dehydrated. I didn't have yeah. any water that day. And then combined with the anxiety, it was also like maybe, it was, it was within my first five ever open mics, maybe the fourth. And so I was still very nervous. It was still very new for me. And so I think that the dehydration made it easier for anxiety to basically destroy me. In that. Let me know what you think of this. I have an yes. actual pathological fear of peeing myself at an open mic, which okay. is why when I do back in the day, you know, when I do mics, I would go to the bathroom. I'm not kidding you like five times just to make sure I had peed. That I under, that makes sense in my mind. Like I understand exactly like how you arrive there. I really do get it. Okay. Cause like after my set, you know, I'm obviously not as worried about peeing. I'll like have a beer or whatever, but like in the, like I will, my friends don't see me before the set because they're just like Abby's pee. <laughs> it's yeah. just what has to happen. I um I know I try not to drink any large load of liquid an hour before I know I'm going to be on stage because I know That's that smart. it take it also I know that it takes water I think forty minutes to go through your bladder and everything, and so I'll like cut off an hour before. I'll try to drink lots of water during the day. Like if I have a show or something, I'll try to be very hydrated during the day. Then an hour before nothing, and then try to go to the bathroom right before going on stage. That's really smart. I yeah. I think that the 40 minutes rule might not apply to me. For me, it's like five minutes. <laughs> it just goes. I just also pee more than the average person. I don't know yeah. if that's science or what, but it's just... Oh no, that that's definitely a thing. Like people have like different sized bladders. They sometimes it passes through them faster. Um, I am an anxious uh, shitter. I'll tell you that. Ooh, and, same. Uh, yes, if I get anxious, I will need to evacuate 
very, very quickly. <laughs> Evacuate the dance floor. Evacuate the dance floor. Cascada, bless. <laughs> oh, so good. So I think the moral of this one is uh, good for good for your friend because it's yeah. a great story that. That actually just reminded me. I do have kind of a darkish story about like, you know, like older Jews setting up like trying to play matchmaker. Oh, please tell. So all. this is a, this is a little bit dark. So um, there was a time when me and my parents. I think I was up to three years old. Um, we were visiting my grandmother in Florida, my dad's mom. And these ladies who were like family friends of my grandmother, they were in the living room as well. And with my mom in the room, me sitting on her lap, we were all right there. They started playing matchmaker for my dad as if my mom and I didn't exist. That's terrible. And for uh, anyone listening or watching that doesn't know, my mom is uh, half black, half white. And these ladies were not too keen on her. And yeah. And so my mom has this. And when I, and when I was told that, I immediately, I felt like such rage. Yeah. I was so, fu- I was like, I was like, give me a name. I want to like, I just wanted like, pound. I was just so angry that someone could have been like that disrespectful to my mom. What did your mom think? My mom was just like, so shocked. She was just, she wasn't even like, I think in the moment she wasn't offended. She was just like, are they, are they pretending I don't put two and two that... together? And he got like, yeah, it was just, shit. it was so insane. Yeah. It was like, they know he's married, right? Like he's not single. Like it was just, it was just bewilderment. And then they realized, and then my mom was like, oh, this is just, this is just racism. That's just what it is. This is racist behavior. What if Bailey's coworker just had like, like his, her, the son just like had a wife at home. <laughs> oh my God. Just, like just a hidden family and he's just, oh my God. Is that my sound? That, that is me. That is very much me. That was a fire engine going by my wee, 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 New York, baby. Wee. That actually reminds me, I knew this girl for a long time who was, um, I like most people. I really do. And I think you're the mm-hmm. same. I think that's why we're uniquely equipped to do a podcast like this. I think yes, I think so too. We'll be 100%. pretty open hearted with people's gossip. There's only yeah. a couple of people I've ever truly disliked. And one of them was this girl um, who I met a couple of times at like parties in high school. And she was so mean. She used to come up to me and just grab my boobs. She would like, sexually harass me. She would say really mean things like, do you think you're actually ever going to be an actress? Which at the time I did. And so one day I asked a friend of mine, I was like, why is Hannah so mean to me? And oh my, my friend God. was like, oh, don't take it personally. Like her father has a second family. And I was like, that's not Whoa. what I expected to hear. <laughs> like, so I told a couple of friends that over the years and they were like, maybe she was so terrible that he made the second family. It's like a real chicken and egg situation. Like, it, oh my God. Did she make him get the second family because she was terrible or was she terrible because he had the second family? You know? Oh my God. Before this I is- sound mean, I just want to clarify this is like actually one of the meanest people I've I, I, She never has one <laughs> nice word to say in any conversation. It oh just pushed God. me to my breaking point and I just had to ask why. And then I found a pretty legitimate answer. I'm like, all right, I'd be wow. mean too. Were you that point? Just like you can grab my tit, you deserve it. Like <laughs> honestly, yes. I every time she came up to me after she grabbed my tit, I'd be like, "All right, you're grabbing my tit. Let's do this. <laughs> we are. Oh my God, you have a rough enough life. I've got good boobies. Go for it." <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to put my. I'm weirdly trying to put myself in the dad's position. Just like. Just thinking, oh my God, my kid is so dog shit. I need to not combine <laughs> with my wife. I need to not combine. I need to get I need to combine with someone else. We need to we need to mix this up. This is a bad, this is a bad ingredient I got over here. Second family shit always really like interests me because how does I how does anyone find the time? I I have no idea. I am unemployed and yet I still feel that my head is just above water every single time with all of the shit that I have to do. Like, I don't understand how Don Draper like goes to his ad agency and then goes and sleeps with like 20 women who are his Hmm. mistresses when he has a wife at home. I'm like, you, bro, you are busy. Like how does anyone find the time? My thought is also, why would you just opt for that kind of anxiety in your life? Oh just the God. idea that they could all, that everyone could meet. Like, like 
you could be with one family and then like you happen to be walking by your second family and they recognize you and they go dad and you're like get away and like it's gotta be a worse nightmare it's different than like you know what's that song that's like two of my bitches in the club and they know about each other like that's kind of a nightmare but it's oh i forget who it's by um it's called maybe i'm just paranoid it might be ty dollar sign but um either that or martha stewart definitely martha stewart best friend yes. of snoop dogg i love martha stewart and I, I love their friendship yeah i would love to if this ever like really blew up i'd love to have both of them on the <laughs> oh my god dream of dreams <laughs> dream of oh. dreams um all right let me let's read another one um yes let's see um my little tidbits of spicy gossip are uh, one even though i am a six foot 300 pound um man who is built like a mountain i am deeply afraid of mice like whenever i see one i freeze and all i can do is scream and point at it until someone comes in and throws it out and some would say oh you're screaming scared it away no it did not those little buggers know i fear them and they mock me for it number two i hate the french <laughs> with more malice <laughs> than anything else on this green earth. Mice don't count. They are the pests from the void because I refuse to believe that they are natural. The French have done nothing to me. Like, they didn't kill my family or steal my favorite stick. <laughs> but what they oh have done God. is ruin my life. This dude has major British energy. This <laughs> this has huge British energy because the British, they got, they got summoned against the French. They oh really, really God. do. <laughs> oh my god mice and the french sure perfectly valid fears we're gonna see weird basically just this person hates ratatouille i know it's rats oh but like, my god yes this person would hate ratatouille i oh i'm gonna be god. honest i'm equally as terrified of mice and rats i don't yeah. think i'm as scared of the french though i've never been to france and i do think if i went there i would probably take issue with the snobbery you know. I went to Paris when I was 13 and um and by that time I'd been learning French for a couple of years and I and I I will say I learn languages fairly well. I have a good ear and I think yeah. I'm learning and I'm good at learning them. And my mom told me of when we were visiting France, uh well Paris specifically, she was like the French are very proud people. They are they take it as a great sign of respect that you are investing and you love their culture and their language. They're very proud, they like it. Um and so I tried speaking French. I don't to think they like it. Parisians <laughs> and they were not fond of it. They were just like vite, vite, monsieur. You know, they were just like they did they want they're just they're very busy people and they just yeah. they didn't have time to like humor me with my attempt at French. That's true. And Basically. in a lot of places, they'll, they'll do that. It's like, France, I think, is like that. And then Italy is the opposite, where they, like, love for people to learn, and they'll be as patient as possible. And then when, oh, I, went to, nice. when I went to Spain, it was a little bit like, they would humor me when I tried to speak Spanish, that so I am trying to learn. But they also, like, if it was clear that I was not completing the sentence in time, they would just come in with the English. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, the person said the same thing with me. They would just like speak in English for me. And then they would talk shit about me as an American. And I was just like, I'm just doing my best. I'm a child. <laughs> I'm a little child. I'm just a wee bab. Why would you do this? Oh my God. Janice, c'est quoi? Oh my God. Also, I just, oh, I love this. There's, here's the weird thing is that because, because I am also having, like my mom is English, I do... It's not that I hate the French, but I do like hating the French. Like when I, I hear that someone goes, fucking French. Like it, there's something just guttural that makes me go, yeah. Just, there's a little bit of a joy to it. It's also because the French, I would say, are not a, a yeah. post group, you know? No, so it's, yeah, it's no. not like you're joining in on anything malicious. You're just, uh, you're just taking a little bit of, you're talking a little bit of shit on a group that takes itself pretty seriously, which is all, yeah, 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 always yeah. funny. Yeah, always. Without a doubt. All right, should we read another? I think so. We are, I took, so I started a, a stopwatch on my watch uh, when we were about like five to 10 minutes in and it's 46 minutes. So okay. we are coming up close to an hour. Oh my God. All right. So we'll, we'll cap it off soon. We'll just maybe read yes. a few more. Yeah, yeah. Let's do a couple more. Okay. So, um, oh wait, there was one uh, ahead of that one. Uh, it said, I've uh, I've been secretly in love with a guy I went to high school with, and he has no idea, oh. but my family does. Oh, I no. talk about him. 
I talk about him and how he's uh, a sweet technical theater nerd who is also a badass in general, delightful. Um, but this thinks of my, uh, but this thinks of my as the curious music. Just but thinks he thinks of, of or yeah. But uh, maybe he or just thinks of me as the curious musical theater girl who wanted to learn about sound design. This is adorable. This is so cute. This is so endearing. This, this feels just, to me like being back at summer yeah. camp. You're you're 15. You're like you're first discovering like what sex is, but it's also through the guise of being in the ensemble at, in Godspell, and it's just all interconnected. And I know, it's just oh my god, it's it's just so sweet. I just I want. Even if this doesn't work out, I like you as a person, and I want you to have everything you want in life. You're just and I'll look at it. Tech theater guys are hot because they're ultimately just people who can fix things. Like yeah, they, to... they have ability. That's a hot. That's a hot quality. If you just have like a physical ability, that is that's an attractive quality for sure. Like finding your own gravestone early. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Super hot. <laughs> but seriously, at my high school, oh. there were tech theater majors, and they were always like. The, the tech theater people were the hottest because they were the ones who like they kind of already had jobs they like the school would keep them until like 8 p.m every day which is maybe not ethical but whatever they like loved yeah them. They, like were paid they like made money and they built these crazy sets and everyone was crushing on all of them in kind it's of also, a subtle yeah. way you know they weren't yeah. showy it's also that they probably have less of an ego because they're not the people trying to be on stage, but they're someone who they're people that have like a drive. They like the realm of arts. And so, and so they have like the creative quality, but not quite the ego or something that might be annoying or unattractive. And, and like my, uh, a good cluster of my closest friends from high school that I've stayed really close with are tech kids. They were tech kids and they're just the most genuine fun people. And I, became like very close to them my senior year and we just like stayed really tight and so like a shout out to the tech kids in everywhere in the world because y'all are wonderful yeah and i also like that this girl is kind of capitalizing on the idea that you know this person's a tech kid and it's like well how am i gonna pick his brain i guess i'm gonna try and learn about sound design like it feels like the intro to like a solo song in a musical. It's like, yeah. I'm just the girl who wanted to learn about sound design. <laughs> Teach me the boards. <laughs> oh Take God. me to the sound booth, <laughs> Sam. <laughs> the light plot thickens. <laughs> the oh. theater lights up. The sounds, the sounds. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make some sounds with you of a different kind. Oh, so romantic. Oh. Um, let me just scroll to a random one because we're getting a lot. Oh yeah, do it, do it, do it. I'm gonna try. Um, oh my god, wait! I I actually read this one before, and I, I remember. Oh please, it, please, it please, made please, me laugh a lot. Um, I can't wait. Somebody wrote in that they hooked up with someone once, and they kind of never spoke again because they mutually like weren't interested. But um, he sent, or maybe it's a she. I don't know the pronouns actually. This person sent the writer a zoom play invite and here is the text that was received it was like they hooked up never spoke again and then this person was like hey i'm inviting you to my zoom play okay hi i really hope you are safe and well with everything i've been putting my heart and soul into the biggest project of my life and wanted to invite you to see it nine dollar tickets here show 8 p.m eastern standard time I work closely with Tony slash Emmy nominated writer to adapt, write, and recontextualize his hit play tape, the movie starring Ethan Hawke and Uma Thurman, into an intensely intimate three-person Zoom call that I am producing and starring in. Anyone with an internet connection can experience this live as if they are part of the call. I would love to share this experience with you. I want to watch this. I want to watch I, this. Are you kidding me, though? You get this from an old hookup. You haven't spoken, and they're like, hey, I'm inviting you to my Zoom theater call. It's like, for $9, not even for free. Did not comp the ticket. Oh, my God. That's... I'm trying to put myself in... Wait, did, did this person say the gender of the... Um of the person who sent this invite, who they hooked up with? Let me find it, because everything on this form is like a little bit um, 
a little bit out of order. It's um, okay. But the thing is like, I can't imagine if I was trying to entice someone that I had once hooked up with, that I would give them a promo code or a discount or it's a like guy, a It's a guy, by the way. It's, it's a guy, a, okay. Yeah. Okay. God damn it. Oh, oh, and the other detail I forgot to mention is because I just found the the initial right in. A guy I hooked up with two years ago, so it was a long time ago. It was two years ago, and haven't had a real conversation with since. Sent me what was very clearly a form text inviting me to pay nine dollars to see a Zoom play. He also starting it by reintroducing himself to me and signed the text like an email. So the text was signed like best blank. Oh, which is oh. Did this person say how long it was between the hookup and this invite? Um, they said it was two years. Oh, yeah, that would be that would require a little bit more formal language, I think. It would require nothing. You just don't invite that person to your. I mean, Zoom yeah, I wouldn't do that. But if I if this was like a really special person, that I would. No, I just wouldn't do that. No. <laughs> you would not. It's. It's clearly one of those things where it's like, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a creative, and I'm inviting every single person in my phone who would respond to yeah. my Zoom play because I believe in it, which on the one hand is inspiring and courageous, but on the other hand, I genuinely believe that no one who hooks up with someone once and then like never sees them again should be imposed upon by that person for the rest of their life. Yeah, no, if, if you're just like, let them fade away with time, wish them the best, and then that's it. Yeah, for yeah, sure. 100%. <laughs> yeah, 100 percent. Oh my god. I hope that you save a screenshot of this and like save it somewhere safe because this is gonna be a story that you're gonna enjoy telling for a while. I hope like just... that you have a project that you can make someone pay nine dollars for and you send it only to him. Like, hey, yeah. I'm in this, I'm doing a Netflix special. It's free for everyone else, but for you it's nine dollars. <laughs> Yeah, that actually reminds me of something. I have a um, I have a friend that I um, that I met through TikTok, and she told me this funny story. That okay, to, it's important to the story. She has very large boobs. It's just it's that's always just that's, a, it's, as it's a always person with large detail. boobs, it is always important to the story. Yes, and so she she told me that she went on a date with a dude. This is two years prior, and that nothing happened. They didn't like have sex or anything but they just had a date and she didn't like him and then but they kept in touch they were still like kind of good friends they would send each other like hellos and happy birthdays on social media but then out of nowhere two years later he was just like i still remember your boobs or something i still remember what they were like and like that's the power of having great titties though for and, real. and and the thing is like she she didn't like, she didn't enjoy it because it was just like, it was just a little bit like, it wasn't the attention she wanted. It's a but ridiculous was, thing to say. Just yeah, <laughs> it's, oh, it's not, it's something, if anyone's listening or watching. Do not say that, please, no. no. Nope, but I did ask her, I was like, be honest, is there a small part of your mind that's a little bit like, you know what, these titties are popping though, two years later and that's all he could think about, what's good, you know? I was like, are you just like a little bit proud that this is like the effect you can have on some? She was like, I mean, a tiny bit. And I was like, yeah. Honestly, yes, that is my reaction to as a person with like, I mean, I don't pride myself on a lot, Lucas, but these tits. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, the thing is, I didn't ask for big boobs. It's not my personality. Yeah. It's not my energy. It's not my call. What is big boob personality? Is there like a personality that like equates to? I used, to have a, I used to have a stand-up joke about it. I used to say people with yeah. big boobs, you expect them to be like sexy and love Halloween. Yeah. Oh, like, that's so love funny. Halloween, you know? Yeah. I, I, I'm so neutral about Halloween. I could take it or leave it. And yet here I am with these big ass knockers. And I don't know. I don't know what your friend's energy is like, but that. Yeah. She definitely should have, should not have been told by that man that out of the blue, but it's definitely oh, yeah, no, it's a not a good pride. thing. But it's a yeah. point of pride. Absolutely. Just a little bit, just a little, but yeah, she um, but she does actually get like a lot of unwanted attention because of them, and just, just and she, it's it's not fun. Being but in that moment, yeah, sucks. I know. Ah, uh, sucks to suck. No, that's not <laughs> <laughs> Lucas. God damn it! I'm pulling the plug. I'm pulling the plug. Oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> not gonna get canceled yeah. for eating a baby that I thought was a croissant. Yeah. Not gonna get canceled for this podcast. <laughs> oh god oh god
Um, yeah. all right, should we do gonna, one more? Should let's we do, do just one, one more, more and then maybe cap it off on a little yes, I think interview that's, um, between the two of us. Okay. So, um, all right, here's one. A weird fear of mine is having bad neighbors. Very understandable. Whether it's murderers or HOA bootlickers, I am not mentally prepared to squabble with someone and then have to see them again. What is HOA? I'm Googling that... it right now because I honestly do not know. Yeah, I don't know either. HOA meaning. HOA Hon Homeowner Association? That can't okay. be right. Okay. That can't be right. Does anyone tell us in the show notes? Are we going to have show notes? Yeah, please. Uh, please um, submit it to us or uh, comment. Uh, send us an email of some sort and let us know what HOA boot I'm Googling what HOA, HOA stands for. Bootlickers. Um, house of yeah, yeah, I think it actually is House of um, Homeowner Association. Okay, okay, Homeowner Association bootleg. Okay, um, that's a very understandable fear. I do like, like the composition of it, though. It's like either murderers or someone who will snitch on us, and then it's like my big exactly. fear is not that they'll murder. That's a good range. Just, that is yeah. a good range. Someone who like poses a physical danger or just like a little bit annoying. Like that's a good range. But someone who's like, oh, my big fear is I just don't want to like, this yeah. person's annoying. I don't want to talk to them again. It's like, well, you mentioned murderers first. You actually wouldn't have to talk yeah. to them again. They'd murder you. It sounds like this person is more afraid of confrontation. I it's agree. Like prepared not to squabble with someone and have to see them again. Like that's, I, I identify with this person a lot. Definitely. Because yeah. I hate confrontation. I never want to have to confront anyone about anything. I it's, agree. It's not my when I was going suit. into a meeting to try, like last year, I was trying to like get a raise and my friend was like, okay, well, just don't accidentally ask them for less money. You know, don't be like, oh, never mind. I'm sorry. I asked. Uh, I'll take less. Don't worry. I'll start. Because <laughs> I just hate oh confrontation God. that much. Yeah. Also on my end, just like as a voice actor, negotiating with clients being like, actually, that's not my rate. Can you pay higher? Like uh, this is, it's having to like negotiate for yourself as to what you think you should be paid. It's just like, it wrenches your heart. I, no, hate, I understand. Yeah. I hate any kind of negotiation or like being, being assertive is just like, is not my strong suit. I hate yeah, I, I, I can, I can understand that. It's like, I think maybe it's something about the way like people of our age bracket were raised. It's like, yeah there really is just no point at which you want to be an inconvenience. Yeah. That was something that I definitely didn't align with my dad because my dad is suited very well for arguments. He just, he likes sort of locking horns with people. And I was just like, this is, no, this is where we're different. I don't, I don't get you. He's also a lot older. He's like 76, I think. But where do you draw the line with that in terms of like, for you, is it like, I'll argue with a partner if we're like having a hard day, but I won't argue with the waiter for like giving me the wrong food or so? Is it like minimal arguments you don't like or like all arguments? Well, if it's with a waiter, I will, if it's, if I get completely the wrong dish, I, I think I probably would say, I'm sorry, this isn't what I ordered. I think I probably would say that. Mm. Like if it was like drastically, if it's something I think, all right, this looks if it's like very close like if i just asked for one ingredient not to go in and it isn't I'll, i don't have any allergies i would think all right i'll just eat it um but if it was like completely the wrong dish i probably would say something because i because yeah. i would assume like there probably is the dish but he accidentally took the wrong thing and it's probably still salvageable that's what i think but like my issue is that like i assume people have authority I just naturally assume that people have authority and I, and I'm scared to like challenge authority. Authority over you. Yes. Mm. What kind of authority? Um, just someone who can like, uh, it's hard to describe. I do. It's not, it's not logical. It's just something that I'm always afraid of that somehow this person would get mad at me and like everyone will like hate me or something. I don't know. I just, I just, I catastrophize. Yeah. Like, uh, any kind of like assertive, anything like that confrontation. I, I think my, I have a similar thing, but it's with like hurting people's feelings. Like I oh, never- Oh yes, I'm, I'm terrified of like being rude or affecting people like that. Yeah, Maybe that's the scariest thing. Mouth. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, you never want to be like, 
and and in a way it's almost in i'm not saying it is this way for you but for me i almost feel like it's an egoistic fear because if you think about it it's like you don't actually matter to that person who you think mm. you're hurting the feelings of as much as you think yeah but i understand that about the neighbors it is it is awkward not to get along with someone I mm-hmm. would just say that in general, awkwardness fades when it has to. Because, and I say that because, like, for example, if you're living with like a roommate or something who you don't know especially well, eventually you're just going to live with that person. And like maybe for the first couple months, it'll be awkward. Then you'll just get used to it because people can get used to most things. Yeah. Hard edges soften over time with like with people that you deal with. Like I, I had a I have a neighbor who when I moved back uh to new york after college like she just really didn't like me and just over time stuff softened i just i tried to be as kind as possible and now we have a much smoother relationship anytime we run into each other so it's great yeah so i would say to this person that it's it's a very valid fear it's very valid to not want to confront people but i would say give yourself time and stuff is probably going to work out and if it's a murderer make friends with them so that they can murder people for you i don't recommend murder actually don't actually uh, hire someone for murder but but if you're but if your neighbors with a murderer um uh, don't get on their bad side that i will say that yeah just don't get murdered it's super easy guys come on yeah come on what are you lazy don't get murdered <laughs> what are you stupid come on <laughs> It's like if yeah, you started no. shaming these Oregon Trail people, like, come on, dysentery? What are you, an idiot? <laughs> Just like shaming people who get murdered, like, oh, no effort. This person put <laughs> no effort in to not get murdered. <laughs> No, just wrong place, wrong time sympathy. Just, I don't know, should have been in the right yeah. place. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. My son, he, 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 never, he never put effort in school. Always got a C student. Of course, he got murdered. He put no effort into his trajectory. <laughs> Always getting murdered left and right. It's just the worst. It's the worst. Ugh. <laughs> and on that note, don't get murdered because it means you're lazy. How and because about- it means you can't listen to the future episodes of our podcast, which is obviously exactly. the most important reason not to get murdered. That is a transition for the ages. On that note, shall we uh, plug our social media and anything else we have going on? Um, yes. Um, I am, you can find me at hip soccer mom on Instagram and TikTok, which by the way, I am learning to use TikTok and it is so fun. Lucas is like an influencer and I'm so impressed. Um, but I am such a boomer and I can't figure out TikTok for the life of me, but I am trying. Yes. I will uh, teach you. I will be your sensei in the world of TikTok. Oh yes. And then on Twitter, yeah. I am hip underscore soccer underscore mom someone else is hip soccer mom and eventually one day i'll get rich and buy the handle off them for now um and then i have an i have an open mic uh that happens virtually on zoom every week it's really fun it's called it is such a fun open mic i love it to bits it's very it's a fun time to come out and follow us on instagram at uh, at ann hathaway presents um ann hathaway is our co-host she never shows up shocker and um lazy getting murdered somewhere Luca, I know, she just is off of getting murdered every week. Just she never learns. Yeah. Okay, and uh, my social media, I'm at Lucas T. Arnold on all social media, lucastarnold.com. Uh, that's Lucas with a K. And yeah, stay tuned uh, next week. Hopefully going to have another episode of two nosy, nosy meerkats. meerkats. And then there's like it, outro music. Two nosy meerkats. Do, do, nosy, do, 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 nosy meerkats. The nosiest meerkats in the world. In we the world. Just <laughs> want to know your business. Do, 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 do. Wait, I'll, hold on. I'll do, I'll do a little beat and just improvise. Hey, we're the nosy meerkats. We are nosy. We want to know your business. We're comedians. <laughs> I love it. Okay. All right. Good. Good day, everyone. Keep staying safe. We're a mask. Much love, everyone, and we'll see you next time. See you next time.